What? <laughs> I didn't realize that it started recording. Uh, we're going to have to edit this one. Um, what no, is don't up? Edit. We're not going to edit it? We're not going to edit it. Okay. What is up, Teach Better family? Oh, man. I am Jeff. That is Joshua Stamper. This is your Teach Better Today morning show. We're live with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on all your social media sites. We're excited to talk today. Obviously, we're on a roll already with me laughing as soon as we started, not realizing because it's it's different. It's different than the last time I was in here, apparently. I don't know. We're going to talk about stuff today. Uh, I'm going to roll the commercial. Um, we're going to pray that Ray never watches this and I don't get in trouble. So let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. We are live. This is your Teach Better Today morning show. Weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My name is Jeff Gargas. I've got my good friend Joshua Stamper here. Um, I'm realizing a few things right now, Josh. One okay. is I've got junk on my desk behind me that I don't normally have. So I'm going to move that really quick because I don't like it. It drives me nuts. I'm okay with a book being there, especially because that's one that Ray recommended. Um, but that's one. Two is there's something different about stream yard when i started it that like caught me off guard and then i wasn't ready for when it first started going so that's upsetting and i realized that that was because of a change that stream yard made which was funny because we literally talked we're like what do we want to talk about on this episode well let's talk about change and how you deal with it and stuff and i'm like <laughs> this is crazy so it worked out really well but um so i'm excited to be on it i've been on this show for a while which we, I both we've never been together and, and what's that We've never been together. We've never done a morning show together yet. For Teach this, better like, today? This, no, we've done like Wednesday wake ups back, you know, last last year. Wow, we really? This is our first one. There might be a reason for that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> so this is a change for everyone then, huh? Okay. Well, I think it was strategic. I think Ray and Katie <laughs> purposely did not put us together until they absolutely had to. I, I I agree. I feel like I'm I'm questioning that because we've done we did a, a Aspire Leadership uh, yes podcast uh, mailbag episode recently and we recorded, uh, which is also up on the Teach Better Team um, YouTube channel, which is which is cool. Now that you're doing that with your your Aspire podcast, uh, which is a change. Welcome as well. Well, this is crazy. Like it's all it's fucking right. Um, when we're next commercial, I'm going to change my shirt to my outfit. No, <laughs> um, so that's interesting. That's cool. So we we were we were talking about sort of this theme of change right today. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk, we're going to talk a little more about some like a little more, we'll, we'll say serious topics, if, if we will, of the change and how you deal with stuff. But we were talking about like, we've also had a lot of change of weather recently. Mm -hmm. You and I have both had snow on the ground already. You, I think a few bit, uh, uh, which a is lot, a co yeah. complete change for you because I don't know if a lot of people, if you're watching, you may or may not know that Josh and his family recently, can I still say recently? Yeah. Four months ago. Four months ago. Um, moved from texas from the dallas area to somewhere in the colorado mountains or something i don't know anything about colorado like there's it's snow um talk about a change like yeah why? it's massive like, why, <laughs> why? <laughs> okay so just for the background <laughs> My wife, uh, during high school and college, she every, she she grew up in Illinois, but she would travel to Colorado and actually work uh, in Colorado in the mountains, uh, guiding on a river on the Whitewater Rapids. And so she would also hike into the mountains. A lot of people don't know that about her. And I did hardcore. not know that until just I now. Know, right. So I'm she's, surprised, she's but... amazing. Yes. And way more of an adventure like person than than I. I, I would much rather like set up in a hotel but over the years i've learned like to love camping and going and hiking and whatnot mm -hmm. so we'd always visit colorado every summer and it was kind of like one of these ideas that like you know when we retire we'll just move out to colorado you know it was kind of like one of those things so sure, sure. after 20 years of talking about it <laughs> we finally made it a reality uh this last and you summer. retired that's we awesome retired, yeah Congrats. i no longer work that's for the teacher team i'm just picking my feet up <laughs> this is news to everyone uh, no. So we just had the wonderful opportunity to like 
be able to transition our family here. It's mm-hmm. been phenomenal, but yeah, uh, having snow <laughs> in October when we're used <laughs> to like 90 degrees well, uh, so was you, very different. So you moved back in what June, right? Yeah. So when you left Dallas, what was the temperature on average, give or take? And then when you got to Colorado, like what was the temperature, give or take? Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was very different. It was like 80. It was like a 20 degree difference. But the thing about Colorado, too, that is very different than Texas, and a lot of folks don't realize this, is in Texas, it stays hot 24 hours. So, for instance, like when we first moved to Texas, I went to a midnight showing of a movie. We got out at like 2 in the morning, and it was still over 100 degrees. Yeah, it, it, yeah, like your your high to low is like three degrees. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it never it never changes. Where like you don't get that nighttime cool down to Ohio in, yeah, yeah. or Minnesota or Colorado. Yeah. like it it will decrease by twenty or thirty degrees as the sun goes down. And I just I forgot how much I missed <laughs> that change. A cooler night, not yeah. only in the day, but then also like the seasonal change too, like the the leaves yeah. changing and snow like my kids have never experienced snow before like, like real yeah. snow that's yeah. cool. so like when it dumped on us and you know the snow only was here for a couple days but like sure they went sledding and they were building snowmen and they were having snowball fights so just to see them experience that and i even like post on instagram on my stories like my one-year-old experiencing snow for the first time and just the mm-hmm. face was really cool to to like experience that f- you know, so it was, it's been a lot of fun. I know some people, I mean, Katie Miglin has shared. She on, hates the change of snow. She <laughs> adamantly hates the snow. But for me, like growing up in Minnesota, that was, I, I had so many fond memories of, of playing in the snow as a kid and yeah. like to yeah. have kids get to experience that. That's, that's pretty fun. Yeah. It's been, we've had, have you just had the one snow fall so far that we had yeah. one snowfall and I didn't know it was coming. Like I woke up, I opened the door to take my dog outside, you know, and like it had been like, it was like 50 the day before. Yeah. And I walk out and I open the door. I'm like, okay, like there's snow everywhere. Like not, it was, I mean, covered, not thick. And it was gone like again after a day or two. But sure. like we had, I'm like, okay, crazy. Now then it was, you know, 60 something uh, two days ago. But yeah, so it was really right. interesting. But I think one of the cool things here, and I, I'm assuming, I don't know. You don't get this in Texas, but you, I mean, you get the leaf change in Texas like you do. No, no. No, Right. Like they just, everything dies, right? It's, it's (laughs) very quick. It's like, yeah, the change is the leaves don't change. They just burn off. November, early December. (laughs) Yeah. They, (laughs) yeah. Someone was like, oh, the humidity is high in in Dallas. I'm like, yeah, that's true. But like, it's so hot that everything turns brown. Like, Ah, see, see, we, we just had the other day, when was it? We were driving home. I think it was Saturday or something. Um, and oh yeah, we were driving, I was driving home from taking, took my son out to my, my mom's house. He was getting like some grandma, grandpa time. I'm driving back with my daughter and she's lonely, missing her brother really quick. And I'm like, well, let's see if your, your cousin can come spend the night. She gets super excited. So we call. And so I go take like a detour, like a way I've never went to go pick up my niece. And so we go down some roads some back roads that I've never gone before. And I'm calling, I talked, I'm talking to Amy. We got her on the phone and I'm telling her, you know, we're going through and like, I'm literally like gasping out loud because we're driving through by a lake, which was a nice too, but like this like canopy tunnel of red, like in the leaves. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that we have this here. Like a lot of people don't think about Ohio like that too, but we have a lot of really, you know, national parks and stuff, especially in our area here. Um, and that's what we end up I'm like, Oh, like we're in the park. I didn't realize that we were mm-hmm. driving through it. Um, it's just gorgeous. I love it. Uh, we yeah. just, this is Amy and I, this is our favorite time of the year for sure. You know, jeans with a sweatshirt kind of thing, but yeah. you could still pull off shorts some days, like with a sweatshirt, you know, on the leaves yeah. and stuff. So it's exciting. And I hope we get a lot of snow this year. So anyway, I know that that just made Katie cringe, but we'll move on. <laughs> Katie died inside a little bit when she, heard yeah. that. <laughs> A little bit. So, all right. So I want to jump in because keeping with our, we're going to continue. We're going to, I'm going to play a commercial. We're going to continue with the, the idea of change. We're going to change it. Uh, we're going to change a little bit about how we're talking about change. Holy cow. Um, all right, let's roll the commercial.
welcome back to Teach Better Today. Josh and I are live for the, apparently the first time ever. Uh, talking a lot about change, and I want to, the, again, change this in, into more, like, talk. let's talk about being in, in schools uh, as an educator, and we can talk about life, too. But, Josh, I'm curious. I want to get your thoughts on this, and we didn't. I didn't tell you what I was going to ask you, but I want to go into this. Like, so, you know, talk about this change. Like, obviously, change in the weather, that's fun. We can love the leaves, stuff like that. Sometimes change is really tough. Um, and particularly I'm thinking about, okay, let's think about all the, all the changes that happen all the time for educators. Yeah. There's the ones that are like always going to happen, right? You're always going to change. You're always going to get a change, a new group of students, right? New group of parents. Um, but then you have like some of these changes that can really come in and really rock your world, which I guess, I guess, I mean, obviously the change in the group of students and change in how they do it, like that can be a big thing. But when you talk about like big time policy changes, uh, curriculum or like the direction of the district changes, um, uh, changes to uh how you're how you're supposed to grade or report grading or um responsibilities i mean the level of the number of changes that have came down on educators over the last three four years now is absurd yeah. um and it's difficult it can be really tough because especially if you're into a rhythm and you're feeling good about what you're doing and then this thing just comes in and completely disrupts your routines and your and now you're struggling it can be really tough and so I'm curious, Josh, as an educator first, and then maybe you can speak also from your administrator lens as well. Mm -hmm. How do we, how do you slash how do we as a whole, how do we not only, I don't want to say, I don't think accept is the right word because sometimes we don't have a choice, right? But how do we adapt to and still thrive under conditions when uh, surprising and maybe unwelcome changes are, for lack of a better term, forced onto us? Mm -hmm. um, whether intentionally, you know, by our administrators or by the hand of the state or the government or whatever, like, how do we deal with that? And how do we get past that? Like, um, and, and maybe not, I mean, if you want to go into logistically, that's fine because, but that's probably a little more, but maybe just mentally, how do we, yeah. how do we adjust to that? Um, and I'm thinking you might be able to pull from a lot of your Trump and form practice, stuff like that too. I'm curious to see where you go with this, honestly, but <laughs> how, how, would, how do we approach those things? No, I think the mental aspect is the hardest thing, especially when you're a teacher and you feel like it's a top-down initiative and you're being forced to do something. And so, you know, for myself as a teacher and then also as an administrator, because even as a leader, a building leader, you still get told what to do and that change is occurring. And it's sometimes a little more difficult because it's not only practices that are changing for you specifically, but also for a very large number of people that you're responsible for. So, with that, it was like having the expectation change and shift. So like expecting that change is going to occur when I don't realize it's going to happen. And if I had that mindset, it was, I was not surprised by that. And so then my fear was minimized, minimized. So like, for instance, I think a lot of times it's like, oh, I'm, I'm in my routines, I'm rolling, I know what I'm doing. And then I don't want to change. And that's my fixed mindset of that. And then when it does happen, then that's when the fear of what may happen and what's the worst scenario possible is what comes to mind. So if I have that expectation that change is going to occur, it's bound to happen. I mean, as an educator, if you think about if you've been in education for five years or 20 years, there's probably been quite a bit of change, especially during the pandemic <laughs> where everything got flipped on top of its head. And we had to adjust to it in a matter of days. So, you know, I know we've experienced that quite a bit and that's put a lot of stress on, on a lot of folks. And I just think that the mental aspect is probably the, the biggest thing. Now you were talking about as far as administrators, what can we do with change? And I think, you know, talking in the admin mastermind this morning, um, for those who don't know, if you're an administrator, join us every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time. But like that group was talking about change that's happening right now in their district and how they're actually giving their teachers a platform to be able to voice not only concerns, mm -hmm. but the fears that they have about the initiative. And if we don't identify those as a leader, then sometimes we just put our head down and try to move forward and, and you're negating so much emotion and feelings from the teachers that you're probably not going to get buy-in from those folks. And that initiative is yeah. going to, break down to the point where you're not going to find success. So I love the fact that, mm -hmm. you know, our leaders are, are having a forum for the teachers and their staff to be able to honestly just voice their concerns 
So that way they know as a leader what they need to pinpoint to make sure that when they move forward, they can address all those different things. Yeah, I love that you went there with that. And, you know, I remember uh, during the the early and honestly the mid and even late, I have to think about it, like of COVID and all the changes. Yeah. We had so many conversations with so many administrators, so many leaders that were like, what do I do? Because everything's literally changing day to day, like minute to minute, hour out. Like, And I know that I pushed hard on uh, several conversations that I had with them. I said, look, like the reality is like a lot of this is out of your control, mm -hmm. whether anyone else realized that or not, you know, obviously, especially with the COVID stuff. So the one thing that you can do is be their, their constant. And I think that's true no matter what, right? So like change is going to happen. Now you may initiate the change or you may not have a choice or whatever, but regardless of whether you initiate it as a, as an administrator or, or it's being forced on you or, or whatever, like you can still be that constant in the sense of providing that platform, that area, that, that open conversation, uh, uh hearing their voices, listening to their voices um, and recognizing, right. And to, I, I can't remember how you said, but like, don't not diminish in their concerns mm -hmm. and their fear. Yeah. Cause it's real and it's understandable. Right. But if you're, and if it's always that way, if you're always that constant, you're going to not saying it's going to be easy not saying it's not going to, they're not going to be issue, but you're, you're going to be more likely to get through it. In my opinion, um, it's going to allow them to be able to handle it and they go, Oh my God, what am I doing with this change? At least they can hopefully go, you know what? This is going to suck, but I know Josh has got my back. So like, I know I can go complain to him. I know he's going to listen to me. He might not be able to fix it, you know? So I think that's a really good point. And then yeah, when you were talking about like the sort of having your mind prepared for the change, I actually started thinking about like, we wrote about this in our book, but I've talked about this a lot with our entrepreneurs and our edge creator club yep. um, community as well is planning to not plan this whole theory of like sort of your plan should always have the the preparedness and the readiness for when something you know the you know what hits the fan and we're an issue where it's like okay well i'm i have this plan together but i'm ready for when something comes in there and blows it up yeah and that's my plan not to plan because my plan's not always going to work right uh, I think the joke made in the book is like you spend all this time and hours and effort and energy and all this research into putting together this great lesson plan and idea and plan for a year. And on day one, it's completely changed. And I think that is such a key piece that I think, Josh, that idea of like having yourself mentally prepared for like, it's going to change. You know, what? I'm a good educator. I care about these kids and I'm going to do everything I can to, to do right by them, regardless of what changes come my way. Um, if you combine that in the educator mind, in the you know the classroom the teacher mind and then you add that to the administrators being ready to support those teachers through those things and understanding that uh that the the fear and the concern is still going to be there that's a that's a winning combo in, in my opinion so yeah you ha you have to mentally prepare for the fact that every day there's going to be some sort of change it might be yes. small it might be large but your staff is going to change. <laughs> your demographics of your students are going to change. The needs of the community is going to change. I mean, you just have to prepare that that's going to occur. You don't know what it's going to look like, mm -hmm. but at least you can be in the mental capacity and space to understand like whenever you need to pivot, you're ready and you're not surprised because I always knew there was going mm -hmm. to be something that happens as administrator that day that I wasn't expecting. That was going to throw my world upside down. <laughs> and if I could at least prepare myself walking in that door and saying that that's going to occur, then it wasn't a surprise to me. I, I wasn't, yeah. you know, knocked off my feet in that moment because I knew something small or large was going to happen. That's going to change the trajectory of my day. And so, you know, that's, that doesn't matter where you are in education, in your role. If you have that mindset, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised more than disappointed. Agreed. I love it. Um, so we, we'd love to hear from you. So drop in the comments, let us know, or tweet at us at Teach Better Team, or uh, tag us on Instagram. Um, but how do you how do you prepare yourself uh, for change, and how have you gotten through some of the changes that have come, not just over the last three or four years, but your entire career? Um, if yeah. you've been in there longer, but curious, love to hear your feedback. We always love hearing your feedback. Uh, if you're interested in that administrative mastermind, that's every Tuesday morning that Josh mentioned, 9 a.m. Eastern time, but also there's an exclusive Facebook uh, group for that as well for school leaders and administrators. Uh, go over to teachbetter.com slash mastermind to register for that. It's all free. It'll get you the info there. So um, awesome, Josh. I love this. Now, we the last thing we need to figure out before we go, or not, not, not before we go, but I'm going to leave it with everyone because we'll take suggestions for this as well. How do we get it? 
how can we instill this mindset that we're talking about in Katie Miglin for when it snows? I think that's the <laughs> ultimate test. And if anybody figures Ooh. that out, please let us know. It's going to be really interesting. So drop in the uh, comments. <laughs> we appreciate you all. I'm um, excited that Josh and I got to be on here apparently for the first time. I didn't realize they were trying to keep us away from each other. Um, and maybe we'll be on again. I don't know. We'll see. But we appreciate you all. If you need anything, obviously, reach out. Let us know. Everything's over at teachbetter.com. We appreciate you. We'll see you. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.